What's up, everyone? This is your island girl, and we are live at the Alternative Music, sitting alongside a living legend, Dean Fraser. Wagwan. Ah, everything, Chris. He's a busy money. You're just hard to catch. Hard, hard to catch. Uh, no, so I don't think so. But busy. Yes. <laughs> but, I, but I can understand. <laughs> I can understand most definitely. You are, all right. You are a saxophonist, yes. a composer. An arranger, producer, basically a man of many talents. How did it start? I think it started on an experimental basis, you know. Um, I have always learned to listen from day one. And um, a famous um, engineer, you know, I like to call him one of the giants, the sleeping giants, Jeffrey Chung. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, he always like asked me to accompany him to the studio when he's working on projects and all of that. And um, I don't know for what reason. I didn't know for what reason. Okay. But then I would just sit there and learn. And then came the great Willie Lindo who introduced me to the real deal mm -hmm. while he was doing the Maxi Priest album and wow. you know I was able to do a lot of vocal production and all of that and everything basically started there you know Gussie Clark, uh, Donovan mm -hmm. Germian, Fatis Morel so all of this mm -hmm. you know transformed into that and then you know, I was able to... Here you are now. Right. Awesome, awesome. All right, so growing up, who were some of the people that you looked up to and admired that influenced As your career? As a musician? Yes. Well, first, my teacher, Babe O'Brien, was of great influence to me personally. Um, a saxophonist also, and um, a very stern brethren and someone who you know, you could look up to someone who was very opposed to you being late yeah. and all of that. And then, of course, that was like primary school. Then I got to high school where I was a member of the Sonny Bradshaw 7 Band. And Sonny Bradshaw you know, was a different level. Yeah. It's a different level of everything. Um, your pay started out like at five dollars wow. and you had to work your way up yes you understand me and that was real discipline and 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 that was like incentive for you to keep moving to, to, to be hungry yes, for more. yes exactly so you know <clears throat> when you when you go through the son of bradshaw college you now you you really learn everything you, you yeah. we're talking about being professional you know and and you know being able to listen to music and being able to do a little reading mm -hmm. and listen to compositions and arrangements and you know I got involved wow. in everything big in bad everything. business right yes. and then now while doing that with Sonny Branch I would a little help of um, a lady called Melba Liston mm -hmm. a great jazz trombone player from out of the United States she used to play with Ellington and Quincy and all those people so okay. I was, she came to Jamaica and did a stint, you know, teaching the Jamaican musicians. That's actually where the whole Edna Mandy thing, that, oh, that's okay. where that came out of. Okay. And um, I was able to free myself up as a youngster, even though I was learning, you know, she would say to me, you don't have to be rigid, you know, you mm -hmm. try and free up yourself, you know do so, a lot of what you hear. Right. So with Sonny, the band I'm playing with, and with her, you know, in the days, you know, going to different workshops with her and all of that, you know, it kind of molded me to be, you know, somebody who has the ear for a lot of things. You understand yes. me? And then, you know, you have another man named Jackie Jackson now that allowed me to be one of the frontline persons in his band, that was a resident band at the, um, at the time it was a Sheraton Hotel. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, and I was like one of the little frontline personnel who 
went in on weekends that I didn't have my yeah. other job. And, you know, I was able to hold my own as a young saxophonist. Wow. And, you know, so it's a whole heap of people help you along the way. And yes. then people, uh, you know. All right. Nice. All right. So what were some of the challenges that you faced becoming a world-class saxophonist? I don't think I faced, I, I, I didn't face any challenge that, it's any so, other it's musician, so like that. Any other musician never faced. Right. You know, the, the, the thing is that was to be prepared for take on the challenge, mm -hmm. you know, and I think I was prepared in, in lots of ways. You know, I, I had people who pointed me in the right direction and, and even though, you know, you started out being timid and a little afraid, yes. you understand me? And cause I, I remember after just being what you call a top 10 musician, meaning you played on bandstands and played oh, top okay. 10 music for people to dance and all of that. So after we did a lot of that, the, the inspiration really came out of a man like Jojo who came and, and, mm -hmm. and Errol Thompson. That's Channel One and Joe Gibbs Studios. Okay. So these are the producers and owners of these studios who came to just enjoy themselves at the the um the bar that are the lounge that I played. Right? Mm -hmm. And they were like impressed somewhat. And they would just come a little after and say, Young man, I am so and so from Channel One Studio. And mm -hmm. he give me a little card and him say, come to the studio, man, and start playing pan record. Oh. And I mean, that was like one of my biggest dreams, mm -hmm. seeing, to hear myself on the radio. I've always wanted to hear myself playing on the radio in a song. You understand me? So I, 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 I took all these challenges, you know, because yeah. even, even when I went to the studio, that was a big challenge because I couldn't put my foot inside of the studio. There were other musicians there before me. And, you know, it wasn't easy for a man to give up in position right. so you can get a foot right. in. So I, 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 I just had to stand out the door for maybe a year or more mm. and wait until it was my turn. Okay. So, you know, challenges, we did just ready to deal with it. All right. <laughs> All right. So I know that you are passionate about what you do. But what would you say is your favorite and your least favorite part of being a musician? Favorite part? I think my favorite part of being a musician is just being a musician. <laughs> it, it, I mean, you don't have anything more than that. Yes. Um, my least favorite is... I maybe... I expect too much out of... You know, some of these artists, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, 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 I watch a lot of foreign, so-called foreign artists. Yeah. And I watch them grow from strength to strength. So it's very rare that you see an American or a British or an Australian or a French or a Japanese artist come to the fore and then after a year or two him disappear it's it's that's not yeah it's yeah. not something that you see happen internationally mm -hmm. so i think that a lot of our acts or, or artists the minute they put a foot through that door mm -hmm. and start to you know Being come exposed. on the scene yeah some of them tend to just lay back right and then you don't get the true him mm -hmm. or yeah. her, you know, the, the, the whole capability thing just right. fall. So I guess that maybe is one of my little downsides, you know. I, I think I think them can do much better. Mm -hmm. And I think if them work, work a little harder, as, as I said yes. before, ready for the challenge, mm -hmm. then, you know, it, yeah. it would make the music much better and, and on a bigger level. Okay, I agree, I agree. <laughs> Who are some of the major artists that you have worked with? Um, that is one, one, what, maybe four, four lines. From Bob Marley <laughs> to Beanie Man. <laughs> okay. Well, you've worked <laughs> with a lot, 
a lot of different major so, acts. So, me uh, not try to remember or disrespect nobody. <laughs> yes, so, yes. Yes, I mean. All right, what I really want to know, though, mm -hmm. what was that experience like being on the road with the Honorable Bob Marley and the Wheelers? All right, I never, I didn't go on the road. Okay. I actually turned the job down. Okay. Because I was on the road with Dennis Brown at the time. Mm -hmm. But in studio, that that was one of my biggest. I mean, today it is still my favorite recording session. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was told to what would I call free up yourself. Yeah. So I I applied myself to what I was listening on mm -hmm. with the help of Bob Marley. I remember um, Family Man Barrett and of course um, Tyrone Downey, Jumpy, a keyboard player, and the producer Alex Sakin, I think it was, yes. You know, I was able to really extend and express myself to the fullest, yes. to the highest level and why Bob Marley never, he never feel if he say, yes, mm -hmm. I like that. You understand yeah. me? And Because that was the kind of person he was, he was of course, right. you know. He was always looking for a different sound, a different approach, mm -hmm. a different everything. So going into the studios with him for like, well, I think we took about two or three days to do the horns. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a survival album, man. It took us maybe two or three days between me, Nambo Robinson, and Chico Chin. Mm -hmm. It took us about three days. And I'm a, I mean, he was really impressed. And I mean, at the end of that session, I was offered the job. Wow. You understand <laughs> me? So that was and Amazing. still is one yeah, of the man. greatest sessions yes. I've done. Yeah. Yes. A lot of people would love that opportunity, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, it's that time to sprinkle a little sugar up in here. Mr. Fraser, are you ready for us to do our first tribute to the Honorable Bob Marley and the Honorable Bunny Whaler? Always ready for the challenge. Remember? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh... go. Ships. Minutes after they took high from the bottomless pit, but my head was made strong by the end of the Almighty. We forward in this generation triumphantly. Yeah. 
is I one and all That's why I stand predominant I stand predominant I And I Again, again I stand predominant I stand predominant I Like said, them not realize I am protected by the most I I stand predominant I stand predominant So, Mr. Fraser, I know that you are a man of many talent. Which one do you enjoy doing the most? I'm just curious. Yeah, maybe play domino when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> wow. you know, after a long day session, I, I I like to to do I like to do my voice production. Yeah. I like to I like to listen to people, listen how them sing, mm -hmm. listen where them singing, mm -hmm. listen them lyrical content, listen to how you know put their their lyrical lines into rhythm. Mm -hmm. So that it sound agreeable to the ear and all of that. Yes. So I really enjoy doing that. I will sit down the whole day and do that. Okay. Really when did you it. started producing? And how did you get into this aspect of the you business? Know, you know, I start produce from day one. The, the, the first song that I tried to produce actually became a number one song in England. What's the name of that song? It's, it's called um, When I Think of You. It's a remake of a... I think the guy's name was Leaf Garrett. Mm -hmm. It's a song, When I Think of You. And I, um, I produced it with a, a singer, no deceased, Roddy Thomas. Mm -hmm. And he took it to England. And it became a big song. Oh, okay. And that was day one. I mean... I actually didn't know what I was doing for sure. I I just did what I saw people like Jeffrey, as I said, and Willie Linda. I just did what I saw them doing, you know, using their ears, yeah. you know, how the song must sound, how it must feel. Yeah. So I approached it from that level. And then I I I I did what I like to do. I like to do voices. I like to take the voice and listen to it afterwards and say, well, yes, I like how this singer sounds. And so I just applied myself that way and that song became a big hit. And we are talking about 79. I was wow. a little boy. Wow. I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. You wow. Know? Amazing. Was it difficult to go from like a, a musician to a producer or an arranger? Was it difficult? It, 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 it not for me personally. And, um, it might be for some people, you know, because the, um, the amount of dance me go, me directly have a ear and a feel of how songs are played and yes. how songs must sound. So you're accustomed to so hearing, a, it's, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you have people who, who depend on maybe for, listen a foreign version of yeah. what he wants to do and right. then him copy that. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. But I I understood how the bass come through the speaker <laughs> and, and how the how the kick drum come through the speaker and how yeah. the hands, the different, you know, level of how the hands should sound and how the voices should sound and, and, and how the moods, you know. 
the, the, the moods for you to cry and the moods for you to be happy. Yes. You know, the minor moods and the major moods. And yes. so this you learn because this is not thought in school, I think. Right. This you learn along the way. And, and you know, when you when you listen to people like Abyssinians and, you know, and people like Aijama and Levi, when you listen to people like those, you understand me? And and when you listen to a Bob Marley mm-hmm. singing Johnny Was, yeah. you understand me? Yeah. And, and, and a Bonnie Wheeler singing I Stand Predominant. Yes. Then you understand these these different, you know, these different moods. And when, when you get to a man like Peter Tosh who are talking about Buckingham Palace, where the man them did 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 a run a little program the other day if you say which is the baddest weed tune. Mm-hmm. So when I said Buckingham Palace, everybody got silent because it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know when you understood yeah. all these different moods and 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 characters that these songs have, mm-hmm. you understand me? Then it it becomes easy, you know. Is there a track that you have produced that you would consider your favorite? No, and and that would be really, that wouldn't be so nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like I like to 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 deal. I like to say what Taurus would say, a mm-hmm. person that I have produced. Mm-hmm. So I would like to say, my favorite track that I produce is the next track that I produce. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Besides music, was there anything that? you liked as a hobby or a career, something else that you would have done instead of music? Career? No. Hobby means a sportsman. Mm-hmm. Can't play football because I'm too fat. So football <laughs> was definitely out. Mm-hmm. But I was quite good at playing cricket. Okay. You understand me? But outside of that, which at the time, me as a youth, me never look on that as a career. That was a sports for me. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, I I wanted to do music from my That's 15. all you wanted to do. Right. And and irrespective of my aunt and my mom trying to get me to do accounts and, yeah. and do my Stick GC. To the books. At, right. at that time, they call it GCE. Mm-hmm. And do my GCE and do my this and yeah. all that. I did very well with my accounts and my math and all of that. But then when it was time to um, take these so-called exams, I was uh, <laughs> a studio. Yeah, stand me. So. Okay. All right. Nice. All right. So now we're going to jump into our second tribute to the Honorable Peter Tosh. Sardine, pass me a split now, please. <laughs> 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 I can't explain I don't feel the flesh 
pleasure I don't feel no pain Make you feel like you're floating on the cloud It relaxes your mind No, 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 no Legalize Legalize oh. Legalize it So, Mr. Fraser, having accomplished so much as a saxophonist, as a musician, is there anything that you feel like you need to do to take your career to a next level? In, in music, you know, well, for me, mm -hmm. we, we have all these so-called levels. Yeah. Um, you know, most people would want... Grammys and, you know, um, I've not done a record that, that I got a Grammy for, but I've done many records that have got yes. Grammys, right? Yes. And um, my, my real intent is really not a Grammy. Or a, my intent is that when I leave, my production, my music, mm -hmm. whatsoever I did musically, will stand, will be remembered as yeah. so when 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 a man refer to Jamaica music now, he say, Well, remember say Dean did do that and Dean did do that. Like oh you say, remember Coltrane did do that and mm -hmm. Quincy Jones did do that. Yeah. Right? I uh, remember Count Basie did that. And uh, so you remember Dr Dan Drummond did that. Mm -hmm. Because like for instance, a person like Dan Drummond is undoubtedly the only trombone player in the world to play like how him play. Okay. You understand me? His style was totally different and his approach it it, it it was it it is just different. And so I want to be somebody like that. I want to be remembered yeah. as a cornerstone in our music, in our Jamaican music. You understand me? And and so in another two hundred years, right? People say, Well, you have Bob Marley and you have the Whalers, you have Peter, you have Bunny. You have Spear, you have Abyssinians, you have... Yeah, and you remember you'd have a hand player named Dean Fraser. You know, said so that this was his production and that was his production. So mm -hmm. that's right. my that's, real goal, you yes. understand me? Which qualities do you think made you such great musician and such great person? Why, my parents, you know, my, 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 my two mother, you know, seeing my aunt and my mommy, them... They 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 are they are educators and mm -hmm. them try to instill a whole heap of things. You understand me? And the, the the kind of life where them live, you know. I know my aunt and my mother as people who have been kind people. Yeah. You know, people who always giving. And thing and and one of the things is that they are always getting also, and uh, so you learn that yeah when you give you really get mm -hmm, you understand right. me and 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 them instill certain things in you that you know you know if you follow people all them kind of thing because right. at at no time I I don't remember growing up following other people you know. Mm -hmm. I was always a person that a lot of people follow. You understand me, and um, so them really they were they had strict rules and all of that. And why well, me still just abide by it, you know? And even even as a big man, you know, I was I can tell you I was scared to grow my hair because mm -hmm. I didn't want to offend my mother and my aunt. Okay. And even as a big man, when he's a big man, no, he can right. do what more on. Right. But it feel, still feel a little weird. Because, you know, me just never want them, be, want them to be disappointed in Yeah. Me. You understand? Yes, so, I understand. Yeah. All right. So now we have our final question. What advice would you give to young musicians who are trying to succeed in the music business? First... 
I like the last part of your question that says music business. Mm-hmm. So first, youngsters must look at music as a business also. Right. So you must approach music just like how you would get up and say, boy, boy, I start a business, you know. And you, you say, well, I want to start a music selling mm-hmm. cameras. And so that's a business. Right. So when you're saying, I want to, I want, the boy, I want to sing, you know. Yeah. It's a business. You have to it's treat it like a business, business. right. Business. Right. And that's how you must treat it. Right. That. And uh, that's one. Two, you should know about your business. Right. And um, one of the handicaps that we have around here is that a lot of our young stars have no idea where his music come from. Mm-hmm. Him don't know the artist. Him don't know nothing about the music mm. background. Right. Seeing, and it is not good. You know, I have I have also listened to the the great North Americans, and I listen to the Europeans and thing. Mm-hmm. And to tell you. When you go to a place like France and you speak about our music, irrespective of age, when you hear one of them youth they talk about our music, see, him talking things that not even me know. Right, right. It's like they study. or Him go so in-depth mm-hmm, in the thing right. that him, him cover all right. the, 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 the different areas and he's able to say, yes, and Lee Perry did this and I mean, Lee Perry just died, God bless him soul. Mm-hmm. And I know, say, 60% of our society, me talk about total Jamaica, don't know nothing about Lee Perry. Mm-hmm. You understand right, what right. I said to you? Mm-hmm. So, we have to, as young musicians who are aspiring to be a part of the business, you have to do a little research and you're going to realize, say, Lee Perry was responsible a lot for Bob Marley and the whole Wheeler's sound. Mm-hmm. It came from Lee Perry. You understand me? Yeah. But I didn't know that. Exactly. So <laughs> so so these are things that you have to take into consideration. So if you say, well why who want to be a DJ? You can't be a DJ and not go listen to Daddy Rye. Yeah. It just don't yeah. it yeah. it no it no it no make no no mm-hmm. sense. You understand me? You, you, you can't say, boy, I want to be a DJ. And then you say, I want to about right. Daddy Rye. Man, oh, a whole boy them there. You can't. It, it, you, you, you know, we, you have this phrase, you have to know where you come from, you know where you're yeah, going. Man. So th- these, are, these are some of the things that I will tell every and any young aspiring musician, singer, DJ, mm-hmm. him have to do his homework or her right. homework. Right. You understand right. me? Uh, and I mean... I, 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 I'm not bashing anyone. I think the ladies have that problem big. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the ladies who are in music right now, mm-hmm. the furthest them can go is Marcia Griffiths. <laughs> and them stop. Yeah. And, and, and one of the things them have to realize right now, at this particular moment, mm-hmm. the best female act in reggae is Marcia Griffiths. Mm-hmm. She's seventy something years old. Yeah. And nobody, none of them young style, can't step near her. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, man. See, that's, 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 that's a simple thing, mm-hmm. you know. So if you're coming to be a part of the industry, you have to educate yourself do your about homework. it, right? Yes, it's the, the, the private lessons, do your homework, ask questions. You understand me, mm-hmm. and cause you have enough people can ask. Yeah. So that's uh, do your little thing. Do you you know do your 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 your, your, your little what you call it? Um, your little project and say, yeah. well, yes, I want to know this, I want to know that because I want to be this or I want to be that. So you know, th- these are some of my advices to these young aspiring people. All right. <laughs> well, uh, Sir Dean, I must say it was a great pleasure to have you on the Chave Show today. Honoring the original whalers. Thank you so much for coming and may they all rest in peace.
So now we're at the end of our program and I'm about to take you out with my latest single, Run Down the World. <laughs> 